Welcome back to my channel. My name is Luando Nueva. I wanted to share with you a few tips that I have noted down on the five biggest mistakes starting out. At the top of my list, I have undercharging. Undercharging is probably the biggest thing that I battled with in my events industry career. It has come in many forms. It's in the beginning, I didn't know how to price things, so I was too cheap. It then got to a point where I was undercharging because I was desperate for business and think if I'm too expensive, I am pushing clients away. Number three is when I've quoted clients where I charged the client a fair amount, but I used all the clients money that they paid me along with my own money because i wanted to do more than what the client paid for sometimes it was beneficial because i wanted to prove something to myself or i wanted to just do something that the client um or no 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 not do something with the client but do something that other people could see and potentially bring me more clients so once in a while it was a big risk but there are times where I did that and it was not good to me. So basically, I was not making the money that I should have been making. And uh, I was making, I was working for free, which is not cool. We don't know. We don't want to work for free. Number two on my list is working and not having a target market. There are so many events planners in the country, in the industry, in the field, in my town, in my city. They like Sibaninzi and it's good getting to a point where you feel that there's a lot of us, that you feel the competition. And if you are just an events planner for the sake of being an events planner, you're throwing your business to everyone, you're advertising to everybody, you're kind of casting your net way too wide and you're thinking you just want to catch any fish. It doesn't kind of work that way. You really want to target who your audience is, target who it is that you want to speak to. Target the type of client that you want to work with and focus on those people. Put all your energy on them and trying to get them as your clients. Leave everybody else who doesn't fall within your package, your niche. Number three, lying about expectations. Please do not lie to clients, guys. If you cannot do something, tell the client you can't do it. If you don't own something, tell the client you don't own it. Lying about expectations. Instagram, we live in a world where we are all bombarded by beautiful images of Pinterest and Instagram. And obviously our clients see these images and that's what they send to us as ideas, as vision boards. It's very, very important from the get go to make it very clear to your client to say, as much as I really, really would love to make your vision come true, that's a Pinterest photo. That is Americor. And the things that Americor has that in South are Tina Asinazo. If you are clear with your client at the beginning, your client will come into the relationship with honest expectations. And so whatever results you give them at the end, they will be happy as opposed to you saying, oh yes, I can do that when I was, be honest. Number four, guys, please, this is a pet peeve of mine. Okay, it was a pet peeve and then I go over it. But it still pees me and eeks me and just rubs you up the wrong way. Posting people's work as your own. Don't do that. Do not do that. It's not cool. Like, it's not cool at all. More than anything, um, we events planners, we all know each other. There's someone who knows someone who knows someone's work. And they will be quick to shun you. They will tag the person's who owns the rights to that work. And also it just leaves a bad taste in the industry. You will be known as that person. Even though you'll get the clients, you'll get the money. But then again, if you're using false pictures, it links up with the previous um, point, which is expectations. When clients send you pictures. So it's very good guys. Um, uh, example, a client will send me a picture um, from Lola, Deco by Lola. And even though they've cropped out the name for Deco by Lola, I know Msebenziga Lola. So I already know what you, the, what you are coming to me to do, I cannot do to the level that person did it. And nor will our prices be the same. But the and the connotation of clients is that because I'm sending you an image, I expect you to replicate the same thing but at like a quarter of the budget that the original creator of the work did.
did. If you don't have photos, if you don't have work, you study in the industry, create your own. I have made a video about how you can start advertising your pop your business and you can do mock-ups. So there are many options available to you guys either than using other people's photos or pictures on Pinterest and posting them as your own work on your platforms. Number five, know what you are getting to this industry for. Are you getting into it to make friends? Are you getting into this business to make money? Or are you getting into this business to start something that has longevity? Make sure you are attracted to the right things and the honest and the truth things about this industry and not the glitz and the fame and everything that people associate events business with. If you come here focused, if you come here with a business plan, I will always, always, always revert back to a business plan. You will have better chances in lasting in this industry. I really hope these few pointers will help you. For my five points or mistakes to avoid when you're starting out your event, I wish you best of luck in your journey while you venture into the events field. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.